So hello everyone, welcome to this video. Uh, we are going to discuss about the job experience as an expat or Indian you can have in Netherlands. So this will be specifically with a focus on Avin's experience, who is a alumnus from Tew Delft, Netherlands uh, in management of technology and he's currently working in Philips. So this video is going to focus on his experience. And if you have not seen, then check the previous two videos in the info card above where we discuss about the job opportunities, how you can search for the jobs and also the student life in MOT. So moving on to this video, uh, where do you work in the Netherlands and in which city? Yeah, thanks Ambit. Like you mentioned, I work for Philips, a uh, leading health technology company focusing on personalized solutions for people in healthcare. I uh, currently live in Groningen, which is in the north of the Netherlands. It's a beautiful city. It's a warm city. And uh, I currently worked in uh, the high-tech factory in Drachten, where we produce uh, shavers for Philips shavers and trimmers. Okay, so very often, uh, like in the expat experience, people ask, like, okay, is Dutch? Uh, I mean, people know that there is a good English environment, but still, is Dutch necessary to uh, socialize among your uh, company, like within, within with your colleagues, or do you have English colleagues, or how is the like the overall environment? I'm quite fortunate because my team is, uh, although quite Dutch, they speak very good English and uh, they didn't have any mandatory requirement when I had actually sought the job. Uh, any kind of managerial functions are usually done by, uh, yeah, it doesn't require a lot of Dutch communication because these people speak very good English. Uh, although when I experienced a couple of, uh, uh, a couple of experiences from my previous internships, I did face uh, a lot of colleagues who only majorly communicated in Dutch and thereby it made it a bit hard. But uh, for the company I work right now, which is a global company, it does not require mandatory Dutch proficiency. If you have it, it's great. If not, uh, not a big issue. You can still uh, work with English uh, as, as much as all the multinational companies do. Yeah. Okay. So we hear a lot that Netherlands offers very good work-life balance. So to be honest, do you like the work-life balance that you have seen till now in your working or what's your experience? Oh yeah, I, I completely uh, really am happy with the job uh, work-life balance here. Uh, I used to work 10, 12 hours a day at, at a job in India when I was a GT and I became an engineer. Uh, usually it's more driven that way, at least in corporate jobs, what I've experienced. But it's around eight hours per day here, uh, but highly efficient. Uh, it's an highly efficient economy and even companies work that way. So you really manage your time a lot efficiently than actually spend a lot of time in office. Uh, usually don't see people after 5 p.m. in office. People start their day early and they end their day early as well. So usual contracts here in Netherlands are 40 hours per week compared to 45 hours per week or more unofficially in India. Um, yeah, my work-life balance, if I prefer to work from home on Friday because of my personal reasons, I can do so and I do. Um, weekend, working in weekends is a no-no. So uh, I really am happy with what the work-life balance in general is provided here. Okay. So how is the work culture? Like, do you see any hierarchy and uh, how are the projects or the assignments or the structure? So what do you feel? Yeah, but the work culture in general uh, are quite different to what I've experienced in Asia. Um, it's very systematic, very professional, uh, direct, blunt sometimes, which may be offensive to a lot of Indians, uh, but I've got used to it because it just saves a lot of time and not beat around the bush. Uh, people are very honest with high integrity in general, and they have uh, they give you great respect for the job you have, uh, especially masters uh, students from top rank universities like Delft, Eindhoven, Twente, or specific other universities with specific programs. Uh, 
uh, education is a pedigree is quite uh, lucratively respected for. Uh, that is the work culture in general. So they are quite nice. They will like teamwork. Uh, in terms of hierarchy, I don't see much hierarchy here. Uh, it's a quite, although it's a big organization I work for in Philips, we are just four levels down to the CEO. So you can that way, a company with 80,000 people and having such a structure requires to be a bit flat. Uh, I've seen three, four companies here, and this is what is the uh, experience I have that it's quite a flat structure. So hierarchy and saying, sir, madam, boss is not available there. So it's not present or applicable. Uh, in terms of projects, it's uh, mostly quite innovative. Uh, most of the companies really focus on innovative projects because novel projects can be done anywhere across the globe, especially in low-wage countries. The innovative products, uh, projects require a lot of uh, uh, conceptual thinking, a lot of uh, mechanisms, governance, a very good education system, which which gives a lot of very good graduates. Uh, and they're also very efficiently managed and very structured. And therefore, projects in general have been very nice compared to what uh, projects I've executed back in India. OK. So how is the work, social life, growth opportunities, and uh, like travel opportunities that you experience uh, during the work, like going to conferences or going to other countries related to your work or something like that? Well, when you become a professional, uh, your social life is a bit uh, reduced because you're not in university and you can't make a ton of friends like you used to do. But of course, you can find your own uh, expat community to make a lot of good friends, especially in big cities like Amsterdam, Eindhoven, and uh, Den Haag or Rotterdam. Um, uh, with the Dutch people, it takes a bit of time, if not months or years, to really make sure to maintain a good friendship because you require to build a trust and commitment with them. But as an expat, you would probably would shift your job in two, three years' time everywhere here and there. Therefore, it's a bit hard to make really good Dutch friends connections. But nonetheless, it's possible and people have uh, enjoyed having a good companionship with Dutch people. In terms of growth opportunities, I myself am exploring. So I'm a four years experience manager, but uh, there are financially uh, good benefits. Your year on year increments are usually three to seven percent, which is much better than what the economy grows around two, three percent in the Netherlands. Uh, if you sh shift your jobs, you can negotiate for a higher package. So this is in the financial aspects. In terms of the projects and workload, uh, I think it's really a subjected to the person and how he or she takes initiative again in finding the right opportunities within the company or a different company. Uh, I'm also not very sure how that would go for me because I find a lot of opportunities within the current company and if required, I might shift. In terms of travel opportunities, um, depends. So engineers from TUDEL usually are desk driven uh, as their job requires a lot of high analytical thinking, problem solving, um, you know, with the contextual knowledge of their program, their background. Uh, some cases, especially for MOT students or, you know, consultants or engineering consultant or techno technical commercial consultants, they might require to go and travel to the clients or, you know, go abroad everywhere. So in that case, they really benefit uh, from the travel opportunities they can get. Uh, but that, yeah, that's how I think I see uh, these are the various uh, aspects. Okay, now the the difficult question, as I said, uh, one thing that you like and one thing you dislike about your job experience in Netherlands as an expat. Uh, one thing I like is definitely uh, that it's a good respected job uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, jobs are very uh, well respected and colleagues are very nice to you. And uh, it's, it's in general, you feel like you are creating impact. So there's no, not many people who are dissatisfied with this job as such. Uh, one of the things I don't dis, uh, I don't like about my job experience in Netherlands is not about the job per se, but the living here. As in, I can apply for the 30% ruling in the Netherlands, which is basically given for expats from abroad. 
but uh, the condition for 30 percent ruling where i don't qualify is that i am within the borders of 150 kilometers of netherlands for the last two years and therefore uh, that 30 percent ruling is a missed opportunity and financially uh, that's one aspect and i think also the driving license is a bit hard to get i believe i've heard from a lot of people that it takes a couple of tries to get a driving license alone and uh, let it only the car so that's one of the things I don't like as of now, which comes top of my mind. But that could be some other things, uh, which, you know. Uh, yeah, I could also say that uh, the Asian mentality still sticks to me because I was born and brought up in India. Uh, I've also worked in India for total I've experience of 25 years in India. So when I have worked so hard, uh, I, may, I think that I'm not reaping the same benefits I, I used to uh, compared to how people are quite chill and still they get the same benefits. Uh, they don't really have to work too hard to get it. When I say I'm working quite hard, I think that's the uh, something of a, a, a more of a social democratic system in Netherlands compared to the capitalistic system in India or North America, for example. Yeah. So regarding the thirty percent ruling, uh, it is like uh, I would say if I mean in short, if you are like a if you have studied here for more than one year, I think one or one and a half years, right? If you have studied here, then I think it is next to impossible to get that because you are already not satisfying the 150 kilometer. And but there is some way you can recover some of the money if you satisfy some of the conditions, which you can see on the screen flashing. Uh, I made a video on that about uh, if you have a loan and there are certain conditions, if you satisfy that, then you might be eligible to get a, a refund of some of the tuition fees that you have spent in Netherlands. If you studied here and start working here after studying here, when you start paying back the taxes. So you can have a look at that. And one more thing I wanted to ask you, like if you have a 30 percent ruling, then you can exchange your Indian driving license to get the Dutch one, right? Yes, indeed. Yeah. That's something I miss. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I can totally agree because I know some of my friends, like international people, one was from Nepal and one was from other country. So they had issues when they were like giving the exams with the practice here and they failed the exams twice. And it was really difficult if you cannot exchange and if you give these exams, it's not that easy if you are learning from the beginning. Like that's what I have heard. Like. Okay, let's not digress from the topic. And yeah, so what salary range can an expat expect to get in Netherlands? Yeah. Uh, maybe you can divide it into two parts, like someone who has no work experience and someone with some work experience before. Yeah. Uh, I mean, salaries in general uh, for specific companies and positions, uh, especially uh, known, well known companies in Netherlands. You can definitely check out the website called glassdoor.com where you can just Google the company and filter it by Netherlands and look at positions. On average, you can see the range of salaries available. Uh, secondly, uh, salaries, there is obviously minimum wage to be given in Netherlands, which is also available in the link in imxpat.nl. So you can see pages for various uh, average wages uh, for various occupations within the Netherlands. So that is also available. So in general, salary ranges are good, uh, but not too lucrative to make a lot of money because the benefits given by the government is itself quite a lot in terms of infrastructure, healthcare, transportation, uh, even education for that matter. So there are a lot of benefits apart from just the uh, salaries you get. Also, you have a great uh, pension system in the Netherlands. So you do contribute, the employer contributes a lot of money. Also, you do to some extent the whole pension system uh, given when you get a job, you know, apart from the job security if you get a permanent contract. Okay. Uh, so uh, if I put it into numbers, like as you mentioned in the last video, like uh, so what is that number that people can expect in uh, as a fresher or with work experience what can be the range that they can expect yeah so for freshers uh, from TU Delft uh, uh, because Delft are engineers who, who are very sought after in the market just like doctors lawyers 
uh, and other specialists. So this high specialist job requires at least, or at least is offered uh, 38,000 to 40,000 euros per annum in gross, which is your gross salary, that is untaxed salary, and which uh, is translated on a monthly basis around 2,800 euros to 3,000 euros. So this amount of money is for freshers who don't have any experience but a master's degree. Uh, after taxes, around 38.1% tax, they usually get around 2,200 to 2,300 uh, as in month net income, out of which 1,200 to can be their living expense and about 1,000 euros they save on a monthly basis. So if you have experience, you can obviously take the higher uh, end, a bit more higher. You can negotiate and ask a bit more. As long as it is within the limit of the salary range, uh, you could actually get information from Glassdoor or from some people who have already worked in the company for that matter. Uh, multinational corporations have fixed grades and scales uh, for jobs, and they usually have a range which within which you can obviously understand how much is actually the gross income per se. Uh, in general, multinational corporations give uh, quite high compared to small and medium scale enterprises uh, like Shell, Philips, ASML, NXP, uh, Unilever, uh, banks such as ING, AMB, and Abro. All these multinational corporations give uh, are able to spend much more for the employees as such. Okay, thank you. So what has drawn you towards Philips? Like, was it your previous internship or thesis experience with the company or it was just like any applicant who was looking for a job and then they applied and bam, so you just got the position yeah. there in Philips? It, it's clearly not the latter you mentioned that I just applied for it and got it bam. Because as a mechanical engineer and MOT student, I believed I had a techno-commercial uh, knowledge and I really wanted to be focused on the techno commercial roles within an organization. Uh, so I chose not to go to consulting firms because all of the various internships I did, I felt like a consultant. I did solve a bit of problems, but I was not able to execute, therefore I didn't choose that. And consultants usually require Dutch proficiency in general, but there are roles which don't require Dutch proficiency. But overall, I did not, I just did not choose that battle of going to consulting roles. I chose organizations and the top organizations in the Netherlands is what I really look for with a compelling vision, mission and objectives. Um, I believe all the pieces of my profile was something contributing to the position I currently am at right now in Philips. Uh, Philips was a great opportunity because of its very strong mission and vision and the innovation that they do. Uh, I believe uh, Philips was my second opportunity, uh, which I went for an interview. And the first uh, opportunity, I won't name the company, but there I was not given the offer. But it was great that I got an offer at Philips, which obviously paid much, much higher compared to what I had in the first option. Of course, apart from monetary benefits, there are clearly other benefits as well. Uh, but for other, for, uh, other people, uh, like I said earlier, second year master students uh, need to absolutely study the market and scan for opportunities. Uh, for freshers in general, traineeships are a great platform uh, to apply and get it. Uh, I myself went through a traineeship in India before I joined my master's, and I learned a lot. I can't imagine how multinational corporations have budgets for traineeships uh, in, uh, in, in in Netherlands uh, to make sure they have a well-dedicated uh, you know, area or environment to breed and hone their own skills uh, for a good, successful career. Uh, yeah, so based on your experience, what did you find interesting when working in Philips? Oh, yeah, so Philips is, uh, really gives a very good, meaningful innovation for a better life. It makes sure it, every product or service it gives, it really gives that. Uh, yeah, and I like, I love the fact, you know, this, this, I love this fact that it happens like that and it wakes me up in the morning. Uh, my specific job is in procurement engineering right now, and uh, it looks me. It allows me to look at the commercial aspects, uh, working with finance numbers or percentages, and makes a sense of business with the global headquarters in Amsterdam, and uh, also to engage, but also to engage with the engineers in the high tech factory right now where I work. Uh, 
uh, I believe for my short term career uh, right now, you know, uh, the short term moment of my career around zero to 10 years experience, I need this foundation. And I think that's what, well, that's what clicked. Uh, and Philips was a great employer to employ me and I'm quite happy. Okay. So any final advice or tips that you want to give uh, for an expat or Indian uh, when they start working in a Dutch company, like what they can expect or uh, any kind of cultural shock, which I highly doubt because you, if you are already a student, you will already experience the shock as a student, not as an employee. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, so yeah, you can share yeah. your advice or any experience that you found very interesting that you, anyone should consider before starting as an expat in a Dutch company. I mean, there are a lot of uh, a lot of people give a lot of advices, but even I would have also give a lot of advice. It's based on our opinions, but it's very a good fact that when you come to this land, you change is inevitable. So you must be ready to change your mindset, your know, the things you do, because uh, in general you will face some form of difficulties, either in studies, or living by, or even in the job market, or in doing a job as well. Um, it is the ability to have uh, the growth mindset, the proactiveness, and also to be ambitious, and to keen to learn, because uh, you always learn from your mistakes. So. You know, like Mahatma Gandhi also said once, you know, I must reduce myself to zero, which means that uh, in wisdom, and there is no wisdom at all. So you have to keep constantly learning on every aspect, not just studies, but also other aspects. So I think that is very important to be agile, adaptive, and also, you know, to seek uh, help when required. And I think that's one of the best things I would say, uh, a final piece of advice I would give to anybody who is coming to Netherlands study or work or both. Well, I mean, it was very nice to talk to you and uh, share, hear about your job experience as an expat in Netherlands. So I hope it will help all the expats out there and specifically Indian friends who want to work in Netherlands, maybe after masters or bachelors or something like that. And before we end the video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed and share this video so you see many more vlogs and many more interview series. Till next vlog, bye from Netherlands.